Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'd like to do a tribute to one of the most legendary cartoonists of them all, Charles Moreau Schultz, aka Sparky, that's his nickname, who passed away 20 years ago on February 12, 2000 at the age of 77 due to colon cancer, which led to his um, early retirement from creating the most popular comic strip of them all, Peanuts, which he didn't like the name. He wanted to be referred to as good old Charlie Brown until he got used to it. <laughs> but hey, why not? Because, I mean, he didn't want to be associated with uh, nuts. <laughs> but it's the comic strip that brought us characters like our hero, Charlie Brown, who's an underdog, joining in with his dog, Snoopy, the lovable uh, personality uh, beagle of them all. Then we have his sister, Sally, joined by with other friends or any other. We have Linus and Lucy, brother and sister. We got Schroeder, Franklin, African-American friend, like Peppermint Patty and Marcy, who are friends with Charlie Brown, or the fact that they fall in love with him. Shermie, Violet, the little redhead girl, and all the rest of the characters that follow. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see why this became a huge phenomenon. It became so popular that we started getting merchandising around. And even to this day, now that it's going to celebrate its 70th anniversary this year, and they, and they go through different languages too. Yeah. So, let's start at the beginning. He was born on November 26, 1922 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His father is a German immigrant but he's a local barber, you know, cutting all these haircuts and, you know, and put some shaving cream on everyone, you know, the shave and all. He makes the biggest business uh, on his own barber shop named Carl. His mother, Dana, is a local uh, waitress, he eventually becomes a homemaker. So Schultz actually spends his entire childhood in the Twin Cities, uh, Minnesota. That's outside of a two-year stint of living in Needles, California during the Great Depression era. Already at an early age, he really did want to become a cartoonist. Ever since uh, he read the Sunday uh, Morning Funnies, you know, with his father. Their favorites, of course, was Popeye, uh, joining in with Skippy and Little Abner. <laughs> So that became totally thrill for him to actually begin to start, you know, drawing. He also had a dog named Spike. I think he was a beagle. It has to be because that's what Snoopy would have been inspired. Which I know the name Spike would later become the name of Snoopy's brother. <laughs> yeah. His entire drawing of Spike was actually published at uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, hard to believe, as a feature. And then later, uh, during senior year at St. Paul High School, he was actually um, enrolled in a corresponding course of Federal School of Applied Cartooning in Minneapolis, so that way he'll be able to concentrate on his uh, drawings and sooner or later be able to create a comic strip. And while submitting all these uh, cartoon sketches that he was doing, he actually became drafted at the U.S. Army in the fall of 1942, mostly for basic training, even though his mom passed away at the age of 50 due to cervical cancer. So he basically spends time, you know, trained as a machine gunner at Kentucky Fort Campbell, rise to the ranks of a staff sergeant that he was becoming. Um, his entire unit had shipped all the way to Europe on February 1945, he helps to lead the charge of Munich and liberate the, the Chal concentrate the camp all the way. But which, by the time 
Germany had surrendered. He receives the Combat Infinity Man badge for fighting in active ground combat on, under hostile fire. So yes, he's been doing. He was a soldier. You know, he he actually uh, had fights during the war. Going back to his interest in cartooning during the war, you know, he he's actually started to um, develop an affinity for Willie and, and Joe's characters in the publication called Stars and Stripes, which um, he began working as an instructor for his old cartooning school. Yeah, joining in with that's all done by Bill Moldens. Then he's like doing some other um, publications with other um, comic strips. He eventually got his nickname Sparky, his childhood name, and that's where he starts to be to create the most iconic characters of them all, Charlie Brown and Snoopy, and that's what created the launch of his comic strip, which published on October second, nineteen fifty. Even during his entire life, um, at his age. He actually married, his first marriage was uh, Joyce Havelson, adopted by her younger daughter, Meredith, and eventually the entire family became a couple and had their own children, which follows uh, all the family relatives, as we all know already, such as uh, Charles Jr., Craig, Amy, and Jill. Yeah. All were born in, during the 50s. So they they live in California Springs for several years. And then they started purchasing a 28-acre uh, property in Sonoma County, California. Which, that's where they actually renovated the entire place. They added a swimming pool, a miniature golf course, horse stables, and lots more. The follow. They even opened a ice arena called the Redwood Empire that's located uh, somewhere nearby uh, Santa Rosa, California, which would now be known as Snoopy's Home Ice. And that's where they started doing all these hockey tournaments um, ever since, you know. Unfortunately, Schultz and Joyce did divorce in 1972. Apparently, this would have been the real-life uh, little redhead girl that was proposed. But then, he later married to his second wife, which turned out to be Jean Clyde. And that's when years have been going by. You know, he joins in with uh, producer Lee Mendelson. Ever since uh, they created um, his documentary, and that's where, since Coca-Cola wanted to come up with a Christmas special to air it on CBS, that's where a Charlie Brown Christmas was born. Also, uh, even before that, um, they were also working on commercials too, mostly ones for Ford, yeah, Ford cars. So if you saw like one of the earlier commercials from like. Um, like in the early, late 50s, early 60s, I believe. Um, you definitely got to see the beginning of, of Charlie Brown, Linus, and the rest of the characters trying to, you know, sell some Ford uh, cars around. So that was the beginning. What led to a Charlie Brown Christmas uh, special is where we started getting so many specials that followed. You know, starting with Charlie Brown's All-Stars. Another holiday special for Halloween, which is, um, it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. And a lot more that follows. And that's where we got our first theatrical film by CBS, a uh, production company called Cinema Center Films, called A Boy Named Charlie Brown. Became as successful as it could be, also got a nomination for the Oscars, I believe. Um, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, but hey, we're getting there. We also, they also continue to do some more specials for the course of every decade that follows. We did have some more um, theatrical films, 
like Snoopy Come Home, which didn't became a hit, and along with uh, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, uh, which was distributed by Paramount Pictures, and then Bon Viage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back. Yeah. Which, that was the last theatrical film to be released. Well, that is until the Peanuts movie will come along in 2015. The first uh, CGI and 3D animated feature, which uh, eventually did did pretty well, and but I kind of wish um, it wasn't snubbed by the Oscars. But okay, yeah, unfortunately he would have loved to see this. He really would if he was still alive. Um, anyway, as he continued to go on. Um, he did actually had an ongoing quadruple bypass surgery in 81. So hoping that um, he recovers and he continues to create all the dailies and weekly uh, creations of his strip all by himself that spreads around newspapers across the country in many different languages that's translated that others have loved to read them and they also love to um, even watch the specials that aired on CBS. Even with the TV series um, A Charlie Brown and Snoopy Show that's based on the creation of the comic strips or weekly so it would have been like if if you actually watched it for yourself I mean even with your imagination. He continued to go on through his legacy even with um, with Camp Snoopy being part of uh, the Knott's Very Farm uh, theme attraction along with all the other theme attractions like Cedar Fair and other parks to follow that supports uh, Camp Snoopy so that means we get to have all the peanut skin joining in as part of the theme parks here. but then as it turned around during the 90's I mean he's already celebrating his legacy we learned that Yes, he did went into an abdominal surgery, which brought in his diagnosis of colon cancer by 1999, and that's where he retired for the first time. That's where he released his last comic strip of them all, which brought in a tribute to him, a very uh, amazing comic strip that we never thought we would ever have where we see Snoopy typing up all the memories that we had and on he was on his doghouse he was coming up with um, some words to describe and we see all these uh, flashbacks of all the strips that happened it's just beautiful he did release his final Peanuts cartoon got published at the same time he passed away really sad and when I heard about this though I was in high school Nickelodeon at the time was still playing all the Charlie Brown specials um, as part of the block uh, you're on Nickelodeon Charlie Brown which launched in 1998 um, I was devastated I was so sad I actually cried when I heard about this it was really hurtful in fact this this actually happened right in the middle of my grandmother's birthday because her birthday was in February we we're celebrating her birthday um, things were going pretty well as it seems but then when I came back home I when I learned about his death I was like I cried and I'll still never forget that day but I did got to see the tributes and I got to watch these specials that followed celebrating the honor of the late great uh, Charles M. Schultz and but no doubt about it I mean he will always be remembered even 20 years later because peanuts will live on for a lifetime 
you know. Because, hey, I was proud to become a fan. I mean, I, I've been a fan since I was a little kid. Apparently, I became a fan mostly from my mom. Because, you know, she started collecting some some peanut stuff uh, for a while. Um, during her childhood days. And, I mean, I wish I had the astronaut Snoopy. <laughs> Especially the original one, too. But it, it was really nice. But she was the one that introduced me to Peanuts um, ever since um, I was a kid. I mean, I did actually did watch The Charlie Brown Christmas in the late 80s, I believe. That was the first time I saw it. Um, but I didn't see any of the other stuff until years later and that's when I became obsessed with it when mom started buying all these VHS tapes at local thrifty and you know which is now Rite Aid and then I, I got so <laughs> I, I, I got so excited I, I wanted to watch more of these specials and I wanted to watch all the movies and so we started renting them on home video and it's always cool because it really inspired me for for becoming a huge fan. I mean, because even I feel like an underdog myself. I mean, you know, I I, I mean, just like Charlie Brown too. You know, he got uh, there were a bunch of kids that started teasing him, and they started pouring a bucket of sand over his head. He started crying, and his parents took him home, and as a, a present because of his bad day he got a dog which would name which would definitely be named Snoopy he got it at the Daisy Hill Park before him. so I was kinda like Charlie Brown too I mean I, I had some kids um, pouring a bucket of sand over my head and and all that sand was stuck in my head it was hard to get it out couldn't stand that and I get picked on at school too you know they started pulling my hair or any of that. Terrible. Uh, although I did got a dog um, when I was a little kid though. The dog was name was Caffey. It was a cute dog. Um, we had it for a while. It was the first time we ever had a pet before we had Jackie or cats and then later we had uh, other animals to follow. Yeah. But of course we do have dogs now. <laughs> yeah. Two dogs and one cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately I wish I did have a dog name that of course I kinda did wish we had a beagle that was uh that was like Snoopy. <laughs> Cause that would have been cute. I had to admit that too. Or, or sometimes I like to have a Cocker Spaniel. That's also cute. But hey. But I also love having cats as well. No two bit doubts about it. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself too. Yeah. Um, luckily, um, Schultz is uh, well -dives and his entire family, even his wife, they're still with us. Even though they've been struggling to keep his legacy alive. I mean, they now have the Charles M. Schultz's Museum in Santa Rosa, California. Which I know my brother Jason, along with his wife Tina, actually went there. They, they actually showed me some pictures and photographs of what the place looks like. I was like, I gotta go there someday. I really do. I mean, it would've been awesome. And they did lost their home due to a fire that happened in 2017. And that was sad and devastating too because all of his memorabilia were there. All of his part time work, you know, that's been saved, had been gone due to a strong wind and fire that burns the entire beautiful place, which they lived there like ever since um, I believe the 70s when he was still alive. 
mean, this was their home. And this wasn't supposed to happen at all. But never, never knew it was going to happen. That's why I hate fires. Yeah. I think they finally moved to a new place for safety. I'm not so sure because you know, I haven't heard much. But I'm just hoping they're okay because, you know, I had met them for the first time when I went to the premiere of the Peanuts movie at, um, at Re Regency Restwood Village, you know, which I joined in by actor Joe Mantegna, along with uh, his daughters, uh, my best friend Mia, along with Gia. Yeah. One of the best nights of, one of our best uh, premiere dates of our lives, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, but it was nice to meet them. It really was. It, they were, they were cool people, and I, I even remember asking um, his wife, saying that if Schultz was still alive, though, he would have loved this. I mean, and I said, thank you, man. Thank you for bringing this to life. I mean, even as a fan. So we had a lot of Emmy nominations, half of which have won. We earned a lot of merchandising that you get in stores everywhere. They got a lot of commercials. Got a lot of specials, movies. The entire legacy is right there because of one man. And one thing you have to ask. Has he ever had a chance to kick the football all the way clear up to the moon? Well, 20 years later, he still kicks the football up in the air in heaven. And right up there, he's still writing and creating more comic strips and making more movies other specials, everything up there. In fact, he never ever gave up. Even if he became a failure, he always becomes, he will always become a winner to us and to everyone. Beck, probably his most famous quote of them all, out of several of the famous quotes he's wrote, it's be yourself, no one can say you're doing it wrong. So true, so true. So, no doubt about it, Charles M. Schultz will always be remembered as one of the greatest legendary creators and cartoonists of the Peanuts comic strip. And I thank you for that. Because good grief. It's one of the finest comic strips come to life. And no doubt. <laughs> okay. I thank you for that. And I really miss you. So much. And I'll never forget it. So I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.